Hello friends, I'm your host, Dr. Dave Layton, and thank you for joining me in our journey to hope. It is my desire through this podcast to bring you information about how to discover, sustain, or perhaps regain hope. In this episode, I want to discuss briefly a very important topic related to hope. I want to discuss discovering and doing God's will. We should seek to do God's will more than anything else. So a fair question is, what is God's will? Or how do I know I am doing God's will? These are good questions and ones that we should always be asking. Sometimes we feel it's hard to know what God's will is in a certain situation, but in reality, it's not. Always remember that God wants us to know his will, so he certainly reveals it to us through his written word, scripture. I want to share some things about God's will to help you to begin to discover that will and to encourage you to continue to seek to do God's will. This is true whether you're trying to discover that will as a new believer or someone who's been in a relationship with God for a long time. All of us need to continue discovering God's will. When God created us, he gave us the gift of being able to choose. He does not force his will on us. Sadly, all too often, we make bad choices. Well, the wonderful thing is that as long as we're living, we can choose to follow his will and turn back to him. I want to briefly look at three things that are part of God's will for us. If you've ever flown on a commercial aircraft, you know that the crew gives a safety briefing. One part of the briefing is that if there's an emergency, a face mask will drop down so you have oxygen to breathe. The instructions are to put the mask on yourself before helping others put on their mask. Well, that's an example of God's will. He first wants us to establish a relationship with him. I've stated several times that true and lasting hope is found only in Jesus Christ. And the way we enter a relationship with God is only through his son, Jesus Christ. Christ himself stated that in John chapter 14, verse 6. He states, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. No matter how much we want to have a relationship with God, we cannot do it on our own. We must go through Jesus. We begin by learning who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God. He came to earth to be a sacrifice for our sins. This can be understood as having faith in our Lord. Here's something to remember. This is the beginning of our faith and does not have to be a complete faith. It is a beginning and we grow in it. This relationship also involves turning away from focusing on self to focusing on Jesus. We do this by committing to learning and following the teachings of Jesus. This is known as repentance. We also need to be baptized. Baptism, as taught by Jesus and the apostles as they continue to carry on our Lord's mission, is to be completely immersed in water. It is a symbolic act that indicates we're dying to ourselves and are being raised as a new creation. Jesus said we must be born again. You know that it's in John 3:16. But Jesus also said that we're to become disciples, to be baptized, and to follow his teachings. He told this to the apostles just before he ascended back to heaven. That's in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Well, then Peter following our Lord's ascension into heaven on the, what we know as the day of Pentecost, Peter taught that we must repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. That's in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And Paul taught that baptism symbolizes dying to self and being raised as a new creation. That's in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 9. Well, these are just a few examples. And as you read through the book of Acts, you see that every time someone came to believe in Jesus, they were almost immediately, if not immediately, baptized. 
I mentioned the book of Acts because this is where we first come to understand God's plan to allow man to come back into a relationship with him. That relationship was originally destroyed following the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden. They disobeyed God and as a result, no longer had the direct relationship with him. But God promised a way to restore that relationship, and he followed through with that promise through Jesus Christ. Scripture clearly teaches in many places that baptism is critical for entering into a relationship with God. We cannot simply be in Christ as it is described without baptism. And then following our baptism, we're saved from the eternal consequences of sin, and that's spiritual death. Well, a second element of God's will is that we must become servants. We serve our Lord, but we're also ready to serve others. Being a servant is a description Jesus used to not only describe himself, but also his followers. In fact, he stated that the greatest in the kingdom was the one who served. That's found in Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 5. One general characteristic of a servant is that he or she seeks to do what his or her master desires. It is very important that we, as servants of God, continue to seek to carry out God's will in our own lives and live so as to positively impact the life of others. The third element of God's will is that we help others discover and follow him. This is done through the way we live as believers and servants and telling the story of Jesus. Living as God wills is important, but it's only the beginning. We must be ready as we are able to tell others about Jesus. Some may think they don't have the ability to teach others. Well, that's partially true. Certainly there are those that have been given the gift of being able to teach as we understand that word. But all of us can tell others in some way what Jesus means to us and what he has done for us. Also, as we mature, we learn more about Jesus and we develop a desire and the abilities to share our Lord. Begin by developing a clear understanding of who Jesus is and what he's done for you. Also develop a plan to study and learn more about our Lord. We do this through a combination of our own personal study of Scripture and by participating in studying with others. Friends, let me conclude by saying it's important to discover God's will no matter if we're a Christian or someone who has not yet obeyed our Lord. To the one already a Christian, it's important because we are now servants of the Master and we seek to do what He wants us to do. We do so because we recognize that God loves us and we seek to honor and glorify him with our lives. Now, if someone has not obeyed the Lord to become a Christian, then the most important thing is to learn what God wants that person to do to obey the gospel and become a child of God. I spoke to that earlier in this episode. God wants us to know and obey his will. This is why we find his will all throughout his word the Bible. If we are earnestly seeking God's will, God will make it clear to us. The key is wanting to do God's will, not our own. I want to say one more thing. It's thrilling to know that God does not demand perfection, but he does demand faithfulness. This means we grow in our faith by following our Lord to the best of our abilities. And when we fail, as we all do, we realize it and turn back to him. I ask you to read 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. In this passage, the Apostle John is reminding Christians, those following the will of the Lord, that we can find forgiveness when we return to him. Well, friends, thank you for joining me as together we journey to hope. I trust in some small way, we have encouraged you to discover, sustain, or regain hope through this effort. I invite you to contact me if you have questions or comments, or if you wish to share with me something you've experienced in your journey to hope. 
My email is info at ourjourneytohope.com. That's info at ourjourneytohope.com. And please share this podcast with someone whose hope is being challenged. I look forward to sharing more with you soon. Again, I'm Dr. Dave Layton, and thank you for listening. And until our next episode, remember, we give all glory to God our Father.